Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be back to a technical video I got a complaint in the last video that uh, what the heck this tech channel was doing replacing a faucet and uh, well yeah it has become a tech channel the idea behind my playhouse was well from the beginning it was um, me renovating my old house and then it became a server and storage and networking and playing around with technology video so um, yeah um, back to the technology videos I have gotten an awesome subscriber gift from a fellow Danish dude and he has sent it here to my address uh, my shipping address it's uh, right there and it's also under the about tab of my youtube channel if you uh, should ever want to ship something weird to me but Sebastian K. Jensen has sent something to me so thank you Sebastian so let's um, immediately go and check that out oh let's see I really should clean here uh, I really should uh, yeah let's see um, I have had it open just to check if um, what was in it and I was of course not surprised to see this which is the box that I was expecting I have been communicating with Sebastian and I was surprised to see how he bought his way into my evening prayer <laughs> candy awesome so thank you and the rest is uh, filling I do have a sweet tooth and these comes um, in a bag with a C14 connector uh, open end I have never seen that so it's a power cable uh, kind of a UPS power cable but with nothing in the other end I uh, haven't seen that so thank you very much but let's go to the technical stuff the box uh, I am sure not a lot of you will get any smarter with that until you google it um, <laughs> This is a management module for the new UPS that I got from Blue Walker. Um, the management card wasn't in the UPS, so it's here. Sebastian had this for sale on, uh, well, we call it the blue newspaper here. It's where you sell your old stuff, get money to get some new stuff, and uh, he had this for sale and he uh, asked me if I if I wanted it yeah I kind of did want it but they are they are actually pretty expensive from new this is like two hundred and fifty dollars so uh, I was very surprised that Sebastian just wanted to give it to me probably it's because there isn't really a big market for this so this is what was in the box foam CD network management card quick guide installation and there is a cable and I, I cheated and I looked at the at the manual before I started doing the video and we need to connect to the management card to configure it and for that we need the cable where well, we will run into some issues because <sighs> yeah serial connection really let's see if we can manage that the card itself Ooh, it hasn't even been opened do I dare? I have to get in here. It says that we need anti-static wristband. We just happen to have that. So just for fun and giggles, we'll try and use it. I do need to connect it to something, otherwise it's... Okay, I have grounded myself to the racks. <laughs> so that's just... Let's try and peel this open without any damage whatsoever. Awesome. Yeah, this I I didn't know about that little board there. That is interesting. I hope this fits, but um, most likely it will. So um, the UPS has management, but currently there's only access to the UPS from a serial connection or a USB connection. With this thing, you can connect it to your network, and um, there is a tiny web browser built in on this, I believe. I hope, otherwise I will be very surprised. There's a tiny ARM processor right there. So this kind of connects to the serial connection and some power in the UPS. 
and it's, uh, it takes that data and it converts it into a web page which it gives me access to here. And to manage this card, I connect to this port here, which is an RJ45 connection, but it is really a serial connection. So, um, yeah, um, it's gonna be a piece of cake. It's gonna take all day, I'm sure. So this is the UPS that we are gonna be connecting it to. I only have the one, the Power Walker. It's a 1000 VA um, UPS. It's ever so slightly too small for my needs, but um, it was very cheap as uh, Blue Walker sent it to me free of charge. I do have an issue though, because it's not very deep. And this one is very deep, and this one is also very deep. So there's like a 2U hole in the back where you have to go in and put the cables in. So uh, mounting that card is, there is not a lot of room for it. So I need to um, remove everything from it and then take it out and connect the card and put it back in. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing that. So the Lenovo X3650 Model 5 here is connected to the UPS. And that's the only server, it only has one power supply. So. Uh, it needs to be shut down. All the other ones has two power supplies, so I can just remove one at a time. Or actually, most of them only has one connection uh, shut down. So, uh, and we get it probably becomes a little bit less noisy in here when we shut this down. Probably not a lot, but maybe a little bit. Let's see. Shutting down. Go go gadget. I do wonder what it's doing it's taking a while uh, that server is connected to this storage box uh, and has a hundred terabytes down there at the moment looks like it's doing something with the drives but it will be shut down in a little bit okay that server took forever to shut down but it uh, eventually came around to it after that i removed the servers that was plugged in to the ups one by one went around the front here and used the power off button and the UPS went into standby mode after that I went around the back and I removed power from it so now it's disconnected and we should be able to pull this out and I have also unplugged the cables that was plugged into it and as you can see it's not very deep and I thought it would be nice to put this out here so that we could have it sitting on that so we can turn it around and get access to where we need to plug this in. And screwdriver has arrived at the seat. And I expect this will just pop in. Uh, seems to be some sliding things. Okay, it doesn't actually go all the way in, but they have made sure to put some really long screws here. Uh, so that will do it. You could actually probably mount this on top of it, but what would the benefit of that be? So, okay, I'll pop the screws back in. Not tighten them too much. Ah. Um, this plate in just a little bit I, I for some weird reason have to remove this again um, and I'm thinking about maybe I should just mount this here um, so I found some electric tape and we're just gonna uh, tape it to the back of the box that way when we need it it's right there But it's more or less done. I should be able to uh, put the UPS back in, power it up, and we should be able to connect to this and set up the MAC address. There is something here that looks like a MAC address, but I'm not sure if that's actually a MAC address. Uh, just in case that it is a MAC address, I'll just take a photocopy here. There we are. Way I don't have to pull the box back out. Okay, and back in you go. So it's a bit noisy back here, but I wanted you to see the problem that I have. This is the 
IBM X3850 um, X5 and this is the Hewlett Packard Dash and down here between those two in there is the UPS so uh, it's pretty hard to reach in there because it's so it's not deep enough um, so yeah uh, that's a lot of fun filming that uh, but I'm gonna be connecting it so uh, yeah okay so this cable that came the serial to RJ45 I think it's a couple of meters but it's not long enough to reach around from the UPS and well maybe if I could go through the server and plug it in it would reach here that, that would maybe be fine but as I have already mounted it and it is powered up um, I have cheated and I'm gonna be using an, an extender I hope I don't run into trouble this is a shielded cable and the one that I popped in back there is not a shielded cable so I'm gonna extend it I have already popped in a uh, a rich cable that is in here so I'm gonna extend that well, let's see how that works okay so that's what I've done up here I've connected the cable to a COM port of a Windows XP or other machine oh well, I have an XP so uh, good old Dell Latitude C840 back in the day when they still made good laptops don't press the buttons okay <laughs> okay so with the cable that came with it I picked a two meter extension cable and it's still a little bit short but this laptop has a um, has a serial connection so uh, we're gonna borrow that in the back here and maybe maybe we don't have to screw it in but yeah you can just get there it is so, yips so the manual says that I can use hyper terminal to connect to this I think Pachi will do the trick it's ever so slightly newer and there is the settings for connecting to it so uh, yeah let's let's see if we can manage that uh, serial there we need to find out what com port we have it's been a while since I've messed around with Windows XP but it seems like our serial connector is on com2 so uh, awesome well we have moved down on the floor because I for the love of God couldn't get this working and I've been replacing cables so right now we are on that single cable that came with it and that's why the laptop is all the way down here because it can just reach around and, and connect in there I thought that it was a cable issue it turns out that this laptop had the old uh, software for the uh, old HP UPS installed and that was using COM2 and um, well I had to shut that down and then COM2 was suddenly available and uh, yeah I thought it was the battery indicator that was just down here but it was actually the UPS from the HP when I shut that down uh, we got better results it opens putty and even the manual here uh, if I had gone a page further they also show putty so it is uh, workable and we need to punch in a password and the password is password so that that should be rather simple in more password Haru. there we are so now we can configure our IP number and stuff okay that was very small sorry about that um, yeah so now we can um, we can put in our our IP configuration pass through reset configuration to default restart change password blah 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 I'll figure out what we need okay so let's try number one here enter uh, oh DHTP is enabled so I didn't have to do all this crap I could just have connected it to the network and configured everything and we get the uh, the MAC address so that was the number that was on the back oh dear that was a few hours wasted of my time but I can also put everything in here let's pop in a network cable instead that is probably easier ah bloody hell I just popped in the cable and refreshed and it has gotten an IP and everything and now I've spent two hours messing around with cables that's much easier and I didn't need this old computer uh, ah, let's uh, modernize here 
Oh dear, this was so much easier. Just punch in the IP number in a web browser and you get all the stuff here. So, uh, well, we get, it's bloody warm in here. 25.4 degrees, UPS temperature. Uh, voltage is a 234, 5.1. That is ever so slightly higher than I'm used to seeing. It's usually 230 volts. Seems like the voltage has gone up 5 volts and it's delivering a higher voltage out or there is a difference between measuring in and measuring out. Capacity batteries 100%, 40.9 volts. Awesome. Alerts, parameters, UPS devices, power devices. So we probably get all the options that are available directly on the UPS. Uh, plus we can go down here and I can I can do all the network settings if I want to change the IP I can do that. I could also just go and tell the DHCP server to, to give the MAC address of this card another IP instead. So we can reboot the system, we can set the time and date, which is probably uh, a good idea. System time is down here, so it's probably got that from there. Set the time zone though. Okay, okay to mess with this we have to be root. And the password is password. Let's see if, if it's okay with that. Seem to, uh, to be happy with that. I should probably um, change that. So awesome, we got that up and running. It's very simple. They haven't done a lot of graphics. You just click through the menus and you can see what you can do. There is email notification and there is SNMP traps and all the good stuff that you need in your UPS. Um, thank you very much to Sebastian for, for sending me this. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm a little bit sad that I didn't get to use the CD because I was going to be plucking that I have some uh, <laughs> CD writers available in my shop. And um, well, I'm just going to pluck this a little bit. Just hang on there. No, you don't order your servers with a CD drive anymore. So um, a tiny little external one like this one it, uh, there's a CD slim portable DVD writer even so it's a DVD rewritable slim portable DVD writer and it just comes with one cable it's a USB cable so you can connect this to the to the front of the server and you can um, load it with your software if, if you need that um, often you will use the management card in the server and don't need a CD-ROM drive or you will use an ISO file but you know it's that option that you have in your drawer and uh, sometimes you might want it or need it and um, yeah and it writes DVDs as well so uh, they are available in my shop they're not that expensive I haven't come up with the price yet but check it out if you wouldn't mind giving this video a little like down there, that always helps. And of course, if you enjoy my videos and always come back to watch them, please do hit the subscribe button. It does actually help my little channel here. I do wonder where all this candy went. I only see the wrapping there. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.